Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka, welcoming you to another episode of Rural Heritage TV. Today we're heading to the Patriot Farm in Leonardsville, Pennsylvania, where Ansel and Brittany Bachman will show us their organic vegetable and pasture-raised egg and hog farm. Ansel Bachman grew up on the acreage where he lives today. He began to recognize the value of homegrown organic food. Um, then in, I don't know where I discovered, I think it was 20, 2013 maybe, I discovered permaculture. But I think even before then, I, you know, I knew about organic food and I was like, all right, I've been eating crap through high school. I've been eating school lunches, drinking soda. Right. You know, like I wanted to start eating a little healthier, so I started buying organic, and I was like, "Well, I should grow my own food." And then, basically, I started taking some trees down and opening up around here. As I started building this, which actually started as a camping trailer, and then it had a, like a lean to, and then that evolved got <laughs> closed. And yeah. then, yeah. by twenty eighteen, we went for the second yeah. she was and moving in. I tore the roof off, put a second story on, but we actually lived under a tent for a year because. I built a tent while I was building a house slowly upwards around right. and we're right, living right. in it. Yeah, I don't right. recommend it, but no. it worked. At the same time, Ansel was working full time. I was working as a surveyor. I started, well, I thought I was going to go to college for civil engineering. I went for about six months, but I'd already got a job working as a surveyor and I realized that college wasn't, I wasn't, wasn't working for me. Yep. I did the surveying thing and started gardening here in 2012 which sort of was prompted then also by my father getting a pacemaker defibrillator put in and i was like all right so we should both be watching our diet so i put in um i had a garden there and it changed as the house built and everything um and then i had some garden space in the backyard and i did that for a couple years uh well i guess four years and then 2015 um this property back here came up for sale with six acres and then actually at the end of when i bought that january of 2015 and then november of 2015 i bought another eight acres which was like the connecting piece between the six acres i bought and dad's piece already so that now it's all continuous a few months after that ansel and Brittany met Brittany grew up in the suburbs outside new jersey the daughter of a land developer father and art teacher mother um, grew up totally different than how I'm living now. Um, right. But yeah, showed horses, loved it. Okay. And then in high school, I was kind of like feeling confined, I guess, by the English riding. So I got into like barrel racing. And oh, really? Okay. Working cows. And um, I worked at a barn, did some natural horsemanship. So um, got into like, I like loved working and like, just I loved the, far like, the farm work aspect. And then I got into nutrition in high school. And um, I'd always wanted to be a cowgirl. So I wanted to combine like my like love for farm work and nutrition. She so still I, wants I, to be a cowgirl. Right yes, yeah, right. I still do. <laughs> yeah. So then, I graduated high school. I went to college. Dropped out after three semesters. Um, was not for me. So I studied first. I started off as anthropology. Um, and I was, I kind of wanted to be a park ranger. So then I thought about like forestry. Then I came stumbled upon um, sustainable ag at Washington State. I was learning how to farm through a textbook, and that really like bothered me. Right. So I dropped out of college, right. um, but I got an apprenticeship on a farm uh, a couple towns over, and uh, it was a pastured livestock operation. So they did grass-fed beef. Uh, they had a little small personal raw dairy. Uh, we did chickens, turkeys, and pasture-raised pork. I was managing. I got another job uh, managing a fair to finish hog operation. Um, I hated working on a conventional farm though. Um, yeah, but so yeah, that was when you were like, hey, you should get pigs on your farm, honey. Yeah, because I, I was so like unhappy pigs. doing the conventional thing because 17? it was just like... Again. Wait, you guys were together at this point? Yeah. We're together, yeah. not engaged yet. We, we were just engaged, together. So. Where did you meet? Where where did, where did and when my, did you meet? My housemate. Uh, yeah, basically a mutual friend. Mutual friend. Okay. You know, that yeah. you met through a local job at the... A yeah, I was working at a deli. I was working at a deli. 
uh, a woman kept coming in. Her name was Carrie. Her and I became friends. She's like, hey, I'm going to be running out this farmhouse. You should like move in. You can take your horse. So I did. And um, she's like, there's this guy I want you to meet, my friend Ansel. And she was like talking him up to me for weeks. She's like, he's got this farm. You, you guys are going to get ma married and have babies. And I was like, okay. And we were both and, kind of, well, I was in a homestead. And you, were into, like, I was you, you were getting into it. Yeah. Kind of getting into it. But yeah, so I had this like vision of this like tall, hippie guy. Because that's just like the way my friend told me. Right. So my friend Carrie invited me over for like a, a summer solstice ceremony. Okay. And um, she's like, Ansel's going to be there. It's going to be great. I'm going to introduce you. It's, it's going to be so great. So I'm like hyped up. Right. Really excited to meet this guy. And um, I'm walking up the porch and there sitting on the porch is this guy wearing cut off t-shirt, like shoveling a bowl of chili in his mouth. And it's Ansel. And I literally in my Still mind took one look at him and I was like, oh, hell no. And I was so insulted that my friend would even think to introduce Ouch. us. I know. And I, I was kind of rude oh, to him. Like, I was that. just like, no, this is not good. A couple weeks later, I was like, well, maybe I should just reach out. I want to see his farm. And the rest is history. But yeah, so that's how we, uh, we met. Because he came over and saw the farm. And, yeah, and, and haven't we left. started dating. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's how we... We met and got together. So I was back, like, back at the pig farm, so I learned a lot. Um, strongly disliked working in the conventional setting just because sure. I've seen like healthy pigs thrive on pasture and I'm like, right. here they never saw sunlight. And um, it got to be a moral thing. So um, while I was managing the pig farm, I went to school at night for welding. And then um, right around the time I left the pig farm, I became a certified welder. And then shortly after that, I got a job in the field. And that lasted about six weeks. The shifts were 10 hours, and then it was an hour from where I lived. So I was gone 12 hours oh, a day. And yeah. what, like, did it for me was uh, they made Saturdays mandatory. And sure. I wasn't about to work, like, all those hours, money or not. So right. when, when like, after the meeting that they told us we had to work Saturdays, I just walked up to my boss and was like, hey, I'm leaving. I actually worked more and hours. And he's like, you're not going to put in your two weeks? And I'm like, no, I got to go. <laughs> and that is when um, we started farming together. Stay tuned. When we come back, Brittany and Ansel will give us a tour of their farm. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is Fieldwork, showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In volume three, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95, plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. All our tunnels have names just for the sake of communication. Sure. Um, this is our propagation house that we just got put up. Um, it's got uh, automatic opening sides. So everything's like... Temperature, temperature controlled, you mean? Yeah. yeah. So, come on. Uh, this is, we just put this up, um, so, yeah, this is it, it's not finished yet, so it's, like, it needs a little bit of work, um, but. It's a nice piece of concrete. Yeah, they, oh my gosh, this is so dreamy in here, so we are able to, like, work through this, um, because we do, like, a lot of makeup reviews right now, um, so the benches are rolling, um, the sides. This side of the tunnel, we'll have them too, and then we'll have more of these benches, but um, everything's taking so long to get. So, um, yeah, so we've got everything, uh, we've got the heat, everything's temperature controlled, so we uh, have like auto venting levers that open to like, you know, passively cool. Um, the sides will roll up. Um, on their own, so it's a little high tech, but we do like a lot of baker greens. Sure. Um, and uh, this is just kind of the direction we needed. So yeah. Show me what you got here. So we've got we've got some flowers growing. Um, we don't sell flowers; it's personal happiness. Okay. But, yeah. So we have our first succession of curly kale. Um, I've got some medicinal herbs started because uh, setting herbalism. So like when I'm 
one of my finishing projects is I have to grow a couple of medicinal herbs and you know, all that good stuff for the blueberries that we were gifted. So they're gonna get planted outside. Uh, parsley, chamomile, we've got thyme, uh, sweet marjoram, we've got sage, summer savory. These are cherry tomatoes. Um, these were just potted up. They're gonna get planted uh, Monday or Tuesday, so in a couple days. So you started them from seed? Yeah, yes, yeah, so from seed. Uh, everything's from seed. Plus an auto kale. Uh, that'll get planted this week. So a lot of potted tomatoes. These are our microgreens. Um, so in the winter, we uh, the markets are like twice a month instead of weekly. So um, our successions in the winter are a little wonky, but this is um, like our winter market. So we've got Tokyo Bacana microgreens, uh, broccoli microgreens, we've got radishes. These won't get harvested until uh, Thursday or Friday okay. um, of this upcoming week. Um, they take two weeks to grow in the winter. Uh, yeah, they're um, super awesome. It's just like regular seed. It's not like special seed. It's just like these are radish seeds. It's a mix. So, so, so you take the tops off and, th and that basically kills the plant. Yep, it's, yeah, we, we, uh, they don't grow we regrow like, tops. We have like automatic like hedge clippers. Yep. I'll show you them. So we just kind of like give them a haircut. Yep. Um, and then the soil will get composted. And yeah, so it's like a really high dollar crop for us in the winter. Um, we can control like really well like we know exactly what we're gonna get when we harvest so it's really nice for like markets like we know it's whereas everything else in the winter is kind of like might get too cold or for something to grow but this is like a regular thing we have sure um we've got Swiss chard these are pea shoots so like sugar snap peas yeah yeah it's that um they'll get a little bit higher and they're super sweet and crunchy people freak out over them they're awesome here is another succession of uh, microgreens that were just planted on Thursday. And this is just for the farm store. So like right now, the way the markets are is like we have two markets one week and then we have like just the farm store harvest. So that's why there's less trees. Um, this is a heat mat um, on here. So we've got like our hot peppers, our sweet peppers, uh, more tomatoes here, uh, more peppers. Uh, these will get transplanted outside? Yep. Uh, no, actually, the tomatoes grow inside uh, just for the, the best side of thing. The peppers we do outside, they do all right outside. Um, these are the pea shoots just planted. So you can see they're just kind of sprouting. Oh, yeah. Um, we have really good ventilation in here with the, the fans. So it's like really low humidity because of the uh, concrete floor, which is awesome. And then we have Swiss chard over there. Um, so it's not really full right now. Oh, and then. Um, we have all the perennial herbs, like culinary herbs on pallets because we have a pallet jack and we just put the pallet jack and we take them outside. So they get overwintered in here and then in the summer they just get put outside. So they're getting kind of lanky. They're going to be going outside very shortly. Um, so that's kind of cool. I don't really like growing in the big pots, but it does make it a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it. So like your peppers, um, because you can bring the sides up, they, they kind of get hardened before you bring them out in yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. These won't get transplanted outside. Um, look at what we even said, but not for a while. And where we're planting them, it's in between two tunnels. So it'll be like really nice and kind of cozy for them. Sure. So um, things will get hardened off. The tomatoes uh, get planted into a heated tunnel. Um, so that we don't have to worry about hardening them off. But right, other right. things we do, um, we do that bit. See the little sea hooks that are Yeah, in? yeah. Um, we're going to have a, a trolley system. So instead of having like a little cart you push, there'll be like a cart in the air that you can haul trays around on. It's going to basically be a pipe track. And then... There'll be a cart that suspends off of these. And then I just ordered a bunch more of these that have a hanger for a hose. So it's a continuous loop trolley track yeah, that goes like around. Head, and then on the inside, there's two straight runs down both this aisle and the outside aisle that'll have a 50 foot hose on these. So there will be no hoses on the ground. Yes. Because then we can roll these without hindering the hoses laying on the ground. And that's this, uh, did you show them this really nice one center aisle? Boom, yeah, now you got a center aisle. Yeah. So. Super dreamy. Um, actually, we should have shown you guys our the original crop house yeah. at, at our house. Well, we're gonna probably go back there. Yeah, you'll anyway. see like what. You didn't see this the barn. Such a dream I, I compared to what I have. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got shown the timber frame.
Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to see. Um, for horse barn, yeah. Because that's a good word. Um, yeah, so that's this is just a propagation map. There's not a whole lot going on right now. But uh, we're going to be adding like sunflower soups. We do a lot of direct seeding. Okay. A lot of direct seeding. Uh, you know, all our green crops. We're not doing transplanted lettuce or anything. Yeah. Whoa! Ow! Horses are a power source that allow for surgical manipulation of an intense ecosystem. And that's exactly what the forest is. We have to keep these truly renewable and truly sustainable practices as an instrument that remains in the toolbox of human survival into the future. Um, Japanese made. You guys have seeders. probably seen these things, right? Nope. Oh, okay. Nope. Cool. Nope. So this is a three row. We have a one row that we've used now for a couple years. We just got this. So like we were talking about like how can we create create like efficiency? Right. So when we seed a bed of lettuce, it's six rows to a bed. So we have the single to row. A Thirty so that's inch wide six bed. Six passes up and down. Well, by getting this, no, to do two passes and it's done. So it's less footsteps. Yep. Um. So that was our thinking behind that. So it's the super jang. And it's all adjustable. Data. I see that, yeah. Yep, the hopper pops yeah, out. Yeah, we take the hopper out, pull the hopper out. Um, so. Yes. So there's seed plates. Um, so this one is for lettuce, but there's like different ones well, for different like beets, ones. whatever. We only have four that we regularly use, yeah, right? Yeah, but they make like and then a bunch of these. The whiskers are adjustable. The mustache. Oh right. yeah, so, okay. Yeah. Yep, so yep, this is yep. adjustable. Um, the felt piece, this felt piece comes out. That can be removed, which for certain seeds we like remove. Like beads, beads. Yeah. Um, So this is really awesome. I just mess it. There we go. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then to get different spacing, you can change out the gears. Right there uh, on the side. Under this cover. Yeah, pop that off. Yeah, oh so, yeah yeah so the little gears change this is um like the standard what we use for everything huh we have yeah basically yeah that is standard. Um, we, we don't mess it. around with this that is so simple and elegant little... that is nice yeah, yeah. um yeah so these are our cat tunnels they are farmer's friend cat tunnels this is cat five <laughs> farmer's friend is a company so small it's... farm company out of tennessee this is a single layer plastic. They're technically three feet in tunnels. We bought them and they were straight But we farm them full, like all throughout the winter. Um, we just brace them um, in the winter because they can't handle a snow load. Um, but so, right, so we've got some spinach and then this is a freshly composted stuff that was seeded and it's starting to come up. What we got here? We've got radishes in here and they're kind of starting to just come up. Then. So yeah, you can see like this soil just looks so much happier with the compost on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, smell it too. Yeah, it was stinky, but but it's good. It's organic. Yeah. So this is um C4, and we've got radishes to the right and the right two rows, and we've got arugula um to the left. Sure. And we have drip on your head. That's fine. We have drip lines in here. What does overhead? What does the C stand for? Cat tun caterpillar tunnel. Okay, C. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So we'll show you a farm map. See how the ropes um, zigzag in between the bows? Yes. And creating a corrugated effect. Kind right. Kind of reminds you of a caterpillar. Okay, I gotcha. So that's where the name came yeah. from. Okay, all right. And we right. abbreviate it, call it either yeah. cat or C. Um, yeah, so we've got lettuce for our salad mixes in here. Uh, right here is the this irrigation line blew out and like made a trench, yeah, but uh, it wouldn't, it didn't look like that yet. Um, but yeah, everything has overhead uh, watering. Um, these get shade cloth in the winter. We use um, shade cloth. We well, don't heat these tunnels, obviously. He said so, winter. Um, yeah, you said winter. What? Shade cloth. We don't shade these in the winter. In the summer, we do that. I'm out of my mind. But yeah, so the seven hoops uh, for frost our frost cloth, cloth in, the in the winter. Yeah. We use Agrabon frost cloth. Yeah, so. um, That's Johnny how we can grow things it. year round. Um, so the, the beds to the right are totally empty. We'll get broad forked and then fresh compost and then seeded this week.
I mean, that's horse manure in there. Yep. That is nice. Yeah, it's uh, the mushroom soil, I guess, that is a nice. mixture of horse and cow. And it, I believe it's got, it is all local. It's got plenty of horse. That's really nice. Yeah, so they found a horseshoe in it. <laughs> One of the guys did, yeah. Truly. Oh. Yeah. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Started built this so, week and it's going to be on the other side of the farm right like so efficiency we... so we needed a, a spot where our employees could go and get like a tool easily um and we trimmed it back so we know what tools work really well for us and that's the tools we keep in here so everything's got a place it's labeled um mostly mostly, mostly yeah mostly. so and again like multi-purpose tools so this is called a mutineer so right these it's got interchangeable um Okay, sure, sure. Belt, and then yep. you just interchange That's them. Made in Never Sink. Never Sink Farm. And I think Elliot Coleman helped with the. So those are design. skimmers? Yep, so just like when you're cultivating the top. Yeah, so um, basically. Yep, we got the yeah, let me see the. Let me see the. So the idea, instead of like, you know, traditional hoeing, you bend over and your back hurts by the end of the door. I'm like, I can't get it. No, I'm just <laughs> tripping on Oh, okay, well, don't, don't do that either. Don't fall. <laughs> so, so we basically, the idea is you walk. Right. Like like this. right. And then you go back. Yep. Right, right. Stay in the upper and if you position, want a different right. tool, your back doesn't hate you. Yeah. Right, right. And if you want it. a yeah. different tool, it's on your belt, so you yeah. just change it out. So it's nice. really awesome. I love this. Um, That's very cool. Instead of carrying like four and different there tools. There are a few things under here that we're not actually using much, so I'm going to be building another tool shed over here, and we'll probably refine and remove a couple things. Yep. Um, here, uh, like this we don't is our, use that leaf yeah. ever. That's yeah, this for weeding? Yeah, yep. that's our flame weeder. Yep. Uh, also made by Farmer's Friend out of Tennessee. Okay. Uh, this is the original flame weeder we were using. It's got the hood. And then we you actually have okay. a hood a for propane that one. Pink, uh, propane tank strap on your back. Okay. Um, old old Jansport yeah, backpack. So, uh, this was the Earthway Cedar we used. Mm -hmm. um, and then we graduated to the Jang. And then you saw the Super Jang. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that might fall. But, yeah, it's um, kind of precarious. We tried this. <laughs> we tried this. Uh, I mean, it's kind of weird. We tried this wheel hoe out, we didn't really like it. That one's way better. Yep. Just, I love that. Yep, yep. Yeah, um, we got another one. Yep. Oh, nice. Yep, that's terrific. Oh, wow. So, and then... Nice long handles. Yeah, yeah we've got the stirrup hose. You can, you can go both the stirrup, you know, this is a stirrup, so it works right. for the push and the pull. Yep. Oh, nice. And you can change the angle of this. Um, yeah, there's multiple yeah, adjustments. it's great. We use that mainly for Handle, pathways. angle, and wheel angle on this. So we have a second one. We bought a lot of duplicates that aren't actually assembled yet. And then the, the tool shed that's going to go on the other side of the pine trees there will be for that side of the farm so that yeah, we're not you don't have to walk halfway across the farm, which is the other reason for taking our wash pack out, out of here and putting it in a pole building there because it's more centrally located. Sure. And that's all we have time for this week on Rural Heritage TV. Next week, we'll be back with Ansel and Brittany, and they're going to continue showing us their facility for growing their vegetables and greens, their laying hens and hogs, and some of the improvements they're making to the terrain, including Hugo Mound. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.